warning the bullshit you're about to hear is going to be explicit if you have fucked up horrible feelings about life skip us but if you're okay with laughing at yourself and being cool then cool continue watching this fucking video bitch and we'll see you at the end when you watch the next one right after or even before i don't give a fuck but your mama she hot give her my number so i can give it to bear love you Welcome to the Are You Fucking Serious podcast, where there's only two of us today. Yeah, because some bitch don't know how to work lights. And he don't pay his light bill. Mm-mm, shit. Fuck that nigga. And he met, he, well, he lives in the forest, so which, well, I, I guess I didn't expect but, much. But, you know, he is a hairless bear that lives in a forest. And you would he think, is he not would hairless. Think, something on the top of his head. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> We've both seen that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got enough force for it to be like a serious happy trail. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> well, welcome to MookieCon, because yeah. that's what we're calling this shit. <laughs> hey, must be a money. But yeah, man, this is going to be a fun-ass episode, because it's just two of us. Hell uh, though, I don't know. It's going to be weird without the hype, man. Right, the soundtrack. We need our uh, fucking little John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm not lying. I am not <laughs> lying about that shit. That is what his track mostly is. <laughs> Unless you bring up Foley Cooley or uh, that one thing that he fucking hated. That <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. Heavy Rain? Was it Heavy Rain? Is that it? Yeah. Heavy Rain. He hates Heavy Rain. He hates like Heavy the, Rain. Like you're behind it, or the mastermind behind the whole series. Oh, man. If you if you make that dude create a Fully Cooley episode, that's that's how you get him talking. Yeah. That <laughs> anything anime, like, he'll definitely be happy as hell. Yeah. Oh, man. There's not going to be a not this list today. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Well, that don't matter, because guess what? Oh, we're ruining these everything. Bitches, right? Avatar is basically just dances with wolves. And also Pocahontas with bull people. Yeah. <laughs> All you just need now is the colors of the wind. <laughs> but why? <laughs> why is that true, though? You know the perfect scene for it, too? No. When they had sex. When they had sex. <laughs> perfect scene for it. Like, come on. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh man! Like if you really be honest, too, like she legit has sex with a fucking android. <laughs> That's okay. I'm so happy you said that shit. I am so happy you said that like, because bitch, when I said like... that, people were like, "Well, no, he it was a real body." I was like, "We just murking niggas and what?" what yeah, I get what? it was murked and everything, but that's basically an android. <laughs> being honest. But that's what I'm saying. Is like, so was it birthed in a lab, and that and that was it, or was it like they murked a nigga and then cloned it? I don't know if they someone birthed it. Obviously, don't cover that part, but it definitely looked like it was, like even the actual native Navi could tell that this was fucking lab made. They got the GMO version. <laughs> well, I mean, when you're the only nigga that smelled like soap, <laughs> <laughs> let's be let's be honest. Like, now that you think it took showers. No, he wasn't <laughs> taking showers either in his human form. Oh, he's real talk though. He wasn't. Yeah, and he don't get wrong, the movie is amazing, people. If you've never seen it, you should. But yeah, no, like fuck no. <laughs> well, at least he will have to take a shower in the next one because it's all underwater. Oh, for is the it? most part. Yeah, the most part. This one's gonna be underwater. I should. I I haven't seen anything for it. I know I saw that it's coming out at some point soon yeah I am. um but i don't know and i don't know what the the deal is gonna be if is he gonna do it in 3d again or what so it will be 3d um the thing is though is that because it's a mission under fox and then fox got bought by disney fox um studios for all their like movies and tv shows and so mm -hmm. um disney basically told them even though they have like a great relationship with them they have a whole place dedicated to them at one of their parks they basically told them um it's been well over 10 years since the last one came out so 
at this point we'll give you you'll continue to have your budget for the second one and the third so you just went ahead and filmed them one side each other um ah. and then after that you have we have to see what the number is going to look like after the second one even determine if the third let alone the fourth one's going to come out also this is supposed to be like a continuing thing like yeah. he, he's making this a big like yeah the whole thing reason like he keeps waiting so long in between is it's kind of like oh technology has to catch up to my vision so clearly that was shown in the first one too he had been sitting on there for like 20 years and then this one it's just about the same thing but now he wants to film more so on the water but the whole thing is that he's creating the technology so what he did to film an avatar mm-hmm. is also what's used for us to film like anything that's kind of like that cgi form where it looks so real so like video games tv shows commercials movies everybody still uses this technology damn yeah so it's like you know you kind of get it but at the same time like maybe half the people that didn't watch their movie are no longer on earth because of COVID. i wasn't gonna say it <laughs> i wasn't gonna say it and here's the other thing too is like people don't look at like kids these days like they they probably remember seeing avatar but there was a huge hype th- around it it was like the first like major 3d movie and it was the first it was the first major film of that type and now unless unless there's something super major like technological wise that they can you know profit off of again it's not going to be as big as it was yeah because nobody gave, gave a damn about the story it was all about the hype for the technology yeah the cg yeah. was dope like and it was around that time too where like just like my son in theaters it was so packed and it had been out for like a while it was so packed there was only room to sit in like the front fucking row well yeah <laughs> and so like when i got into the theater so like i'll sit like this so like i don't know how it was to sit like further back but i'm like at least up front like the <laughs> cgi was fucking amazing and so um <laughs> But like, yeah, they had that. I remember niggas used to take the 3D glasses instead of returning and take them back to school, plug the hole out, and be walking around like, man, nigga, I'm a nerd. <laughs> Type of shit. Oh, fuck. A whole cultural phenomenon. Like, yeah. That was a whole thing. Damn. Because think about it now. Like, 3D that brought back memories. Is the standard now. <laughs> like, instead of it just being like. It's not anymore. Like, like, nobody gives a shit about it. No. Like, I remember when they were trying to do 3D TVs, and that was a big thing. And that shit failed. Horribly, nigga. I'm like, no headache. But I'm trying to watch a basketball game, and the problem was it wasn't even that for me. For me, it was just the fact that everybody used such a vastly different technology. You had to have the matching 3D glasses for the TV brand that you bought, which each pair of glasses is like forty, fifty dollars. Yeah, like they did that shit on purpose, and like, of course, you're not gonna buy that shit. Like, why would fuck would I spend a hundred dollars on two pairs of glasses? Like, what? Yeah. The, the TV was three grand. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, actually, that, that was the cheaper, on the cheaper side, too. Yeah, and I fucked them niggas that were buying Plasma's TV. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then it's like, oh, what, the Plasma rents out? So, yeah, nigga, rent center made a lot of money off of niggas getting Plasma screen TVs. Like, that shit yep. was supposed to be the thing. Got nobody use that shit. No. Yeah, I mean, 1080i and then 1080p, like, they were like, oh, I, I got in 1080i for you. Like, nope. <laughs> Sorry, man. That's not how that works. 1080p 4K. was better. You're right. 4K and then shit. we got 4K. God, that's oh, far. Man, that's 80k or some shit like that. Like what? I think it is. No, no. I have an 8K TV in my living room, so that's shit, nigga. Huh? I still have white people shit. That's why I'm not even living around white people too long. No, that's that's how you know I have a husband that's obsessed with TVs. There's a TV in every room in this house. Yeah. Why the fuck does a ferret have a TV in her room? Hey, hey, Ferret's getting lonely too, okay? She ain't lonely. She's <laughs> sleeping literally all day with her dying. Are you ass. as old as she is. You know what? Don't hate my foot, all right? Just because she don't love you as much as she loves me. And she only met me once. That's true, though. Like, I'm not, that, there's no lie spoken. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to deny that shit. It's true. <laughs> and I, I, and energy. I fucking called it. Yeah. I fucking called it. I knew she was going to be the last one left. <laughs> and I knew I was gonna be stuck with her old ass. Well, look at your ass, <laughs> man! I, I foreshadowed that shit. Like, uh, put that shit out there. See, that's what happens when you fuck with the universe, nigga. What happens on Earth stays on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Come 
Oh, goody. <laughs> Yeah. Oh shit. Uh, what's another movie we can ruin for the people? Um, um Titanic, the sink, the the boat sank, but it didn't have to. <laughs> I'll never let go, Rose. <laughs> he let that go. Bitch let go. That bitch let go, man. He told her not to let go too. <laughs> oh right, and then she pushed his ass. And she let go of his hand. Yeah. After she woke up, yeah, and let that nigga sink. Yeah. Oh, selfish ass. Like, let's go. Yeah. She only wanted the dick for one night, and then she let her his ass like freeze to death. Bitch, there was room on there. There was room on that piece of plank. Exactly. And, and what was even more messed up about that was the fact that, like, they actually could have survived together via body warmth. Not only that, they can. So, the true story, and it actually shows up in the movie. Um, the baker mm -hmm. uh, on the, the boat. Once he realized it was going down, he was like, fuck this. I'm going to spend the rest of this night drunk off my ass. <laughs> and so he, and he was the last person off the boat as well. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, uh, the, there were reports of, and the uh, Titanic movie actually showed it of him actually at one point throwing the, uh, chairs over the, uh, boat because they were trying not to float so that way people didn't have to like drown they can just hold on to a chair to stay afloat mm -hmm. and so after that and after like saving a whole bunch of people doing that process he finally makes it to the very top or the very end of the boat that's going down and he um is on the last one to go he's like holding on everything to go in and so still alive during this whole point because the blood alcohol content level was so fucking high they kept this man warm enough in the cold water for hours until he was found they should have just did that Damn, I should, I didn't know that. You just you yes. just taught, you just you just put me on game, like for real, like yeah. damn. Yeah. So there's a whole like and myth about this proved it too. Like if you drink enough alcohol, you just you're born. You don't feel shit. That's why people in Minnesota drive in the winter and can go to the club in a mini skirt and short sleeves and shit because it's fucking warm to them. Like yeah, plus you get used to it. But yeah, freezing cold water. You do. Yeah, <laughs> you a bitch. Fuck yeah, man. man. The fuck. <laughs> exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, if you get drunk enough, you got to survive. No, I mean, you're, no, you're not wrong about that piece. I, I, I but that's kind of crazy that he actually survived because of that. That nigga was like, "Shit, I'm about to get wasted. This is my last moment on earth. I'm about to get drunk and lit." Like, yeah. In the bright side too, if you get sick and you just throw up, I mean, you're just throwing up in water. Ain't gotta clean it. Nope. Not at all. Shit. Just there are bright sides. I mean, but damn. Mm-hmm. I just, I no, I'm actually really thinking about that shit. That's crazy. <laughs> it was fucked up, saved my life. Yeah. Oh Man. shit. He said on gang. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, so yeah, people don't don't look like it. That's why people like. Oh, you meet a lot of people who say that like the Titanic is their favorite movie. Mm. Like, and like you got to be wary of them motherfuckers because it's like either you like love a tragic love story or bitch everybody around you is gonna drown. Like one of these options. Like, like nah, mm -mm, that shit's not cool at all. The movie. So the last time I watched it all the way through, I was in high school and I was supposed to be cleaning my room. I was like 15, I think. And after the movie was over, I was just like, this fucking sucks as usual. And I'm just going back to cleaning my room. It wasn't enough to just make me be like, you know what? I'm not going to clean my room now. <laughs> that, like, that's how I felt on the Titanic. <laughs> so if you've never seen it, don't. <laughs> just don't. I wouldn't, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, it's a story that didn't need to be told. They've already been told before in theaters back in the day, like black and white. I know, but it, it just in general, it just didn't need to be told. <clears throat> yeah. Honestly, it's one of those things where it, it was just, it was just a way to profit off of tragedy and to create a, a by the way, a false love story. Cause that wasn't real. Like. Leaving Nan Rose is selfish. 
No, I mean, yeah, they wrote the they wrote in the selfish bitch. They made up a selfish bitch. Like, do you know how crazy that is? <laughs> two guys falling for her. One filthy rich and one poor as hell. And you know what? She still wasn't satisfied. She let that nigga freeze. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> she said, Bye, bitch. Oh, I'm staying at war. All right, what other movie we uh, ruining? Uh, you know what? We're gonna ruin Silver Linings Playbook. I don't know if you ever seen it. It is a romantic comedy. Yeah. Uh, With love the, it. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, Jennifer and, Lawrence uh, and uh, oh god, what's his name? Sexy as hell. Blue eyes, blonde yeah. hair. I can't remember. Uh, shit. He was in The Hangover. I can't remember his name. Goddamn. Yeah. Fuck. It's gonna bother me. I need to look it up now. <laughs> That's one of those um, things. Sweet. It was a soon, popped up. As soon as you say uh, it. Bradley soon, Cooper. There you go. <laughs> Rocket Raccoon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I get him and Matthew McConaughey name wise mixed up, but other than that, I know what the two of them look like. Um yeah, that movie, I will say this because it's actually one of my favorite romantic comedies ever. It's probably the top tier status in romantic comedies because of the fact that it literally paired the two most unlikely individuals to fall in love and it made sense like the two of them were meant from each other from the get-go you had the um person that was being like bipolar disorder and everything like trying to find a normal scene in his life and thinks that he could still go back to his ex-wife who was a fucked up individual to begin with mm -hmm. especially using the wedding song oh like, man god Yo, the fact that all he did was punch him is lucky. Cute. And that's and, and and that's what that's what fucked me up. I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't think he was I didn't think that he had any problems. I know that like I think what I think he developed issues and I think that's that's something that they should have highlighted. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a movie, but yeah. But that's I what I'm saying is like it, it was a big mental health thing at the time because you you hadn't seen that in movies. Yeah. before especially not as over like as that but i think he got mental health issues when he was in the psych ward because so, yeah well and also what people the other thing that they don't talk about and a lot of people don't talk about is well, if you take medication that you do not need especially when it comes to things like benzodiazepines and all of those fucking things like any of those even like your even adhd medicine you can give yourself mental issues. I'm not saying specifically if you take ADHD medicine, you're going to get ADHD, but you can actually create the, those pathways like or, or fucked up pathways in your brain by taking ADHD medication, for example. Or you can dole out yourself by uh, taking bipolar medications. Like you can do that. And, I, and here's the thing, because he had a perfectly logical fucking reaction to finding a random person on his wife. Like, I think it was like their coworkers. They all worked at the same school. Yep, he had a perfect and and in that, your house. Yep, playing your wedding song. Yep, in your shower with your wife, and they want to call you crazy. The fact that the 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 trailer song wasn't contagious, <laughs> like <laughs> you know, yeah. Like I, I know, I know who else is in that song, but it's an <laughs> Isley Brothers song. <laughs> God. Like the whole fact that like it, it's the way that movie plays in the parts because you definitely see just the issues he's going through from the minute he gets out trying to adjust with like his dad doesn't understand his mom that's more kind of towards it but at the same time they want him to grow and be a normal adult but he's like he has to find something so he's find his way and then he finds a way to kind of like stay focused and really get involved into what he's doing and it happens to be with this girl who everyone says is basically like the town whore in reality she's just a random person and not a random person but just a person who is largely misunderstood mm -hmm. and they don't ever really express it but you can see signs of like depression like everyone thinks they know who she is based on some like random story instead of just being like all right this person seems dealt with shit yeah and that's and that's what i mean though is like they did a pretty poor a piss poor job and here's the thing they that also those people exist like the, the the way the parents are, those people exist, and yeah. 
the fact of the matter is is again what they they should have highlighted because they made him look like he was fucking crazy he wanted his life to go back to normal even though she even though she clearly cheated on him and even though she clearly didn't love this nigga like she like and she allowed this shit to happen that's 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 the worst fucking and part she played into it like that's what i'm saying the event writing him letters and shit like that like yeah, and it's because well, she doesn't she run back, but it was like she kind of like she led him on without actually saying anything. She led him on like, and she led him on in the marriage, and she kept leading him on. That was the that's that's my whole issue. Yeah. And and yes, I know like there's gonna be like the uh, people are gonna be like, well, he's like all oh, men's rights and shit. I'm not men's rights specifically, but I'm in this partic- particular scenario. If you actually look at this shit objectively, she's yeah. the one with, who had mental health issues, who had actual issues. Mm-hmm. he developed issues after going through a traumatic experience yes because that is traumatic and that and that's what people don't quite understand is that and that's why i didn't like that they didn't highlight that's an extremely traumatic experience and 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 if you're like oh well you can't take that that's just somebody cheating blah 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 like yo that's uh that's the along the lines of saying like he's he needs to be a man like yeah. you're basically saying that shit and the reality is is that like he needed he needed help because he went through a traumatic experience, not because he was crazy. Yeah. And like the whole thing too is that like if you really think about the more fucked up part about it, I like, you see a lot of times and you like we all have in some form of talk to people who have cheated. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that people who usually cheat the those smart ones will do is not be at home. Yeah. Don't put yourself in that room. It was at his house. Yep. With his wedding mixtape. With his wedding mixtape. And here's the thing. They worked at the same place. Right. This nigga she, they knew each Monday. other's schedules. Right. Like, she can't... And then here's the thing. You couldn't have acted surprised Left about that. Left a trail that. of clothes from the door all the way up to the bathroom. Right. Like, there was no attempt to even, like, think, like, oh, he might come home and see me. Right. She was hoping that he did. Ugh. Like, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Now that I'm saying this shit out loud, I think that bitch set him up. I'm not even gonna front. No, I'm not even gonna front because, and, and maybe this is just, again, we're, we're ruining movies here. This might just be poor writing. Because <laughs> everyone can say, or over the movies for the book. Yeah. Or overly dramatic shit. Like, let me right. say that. Because the, the, that is a way to create something that's overly dramatized, like following the clothes and finding everything out versus, you know, hey, sweetheart, how's it going? You walk into the room by accident, you know. Because the impact, I, I would say, would be slightly different. But still, when you present it the way it was, and this hoe literally cheated on him, put him in a psych ward, got rid of him in his house. Yep. And yes, it's both of yours, but it's also his. I'm saying because it's your, it's hers and it's his. Um, and here's the thing. like He didn't get anything in the end. And I don't mean the end of the movie, but I'm talking about in the end of their marriage, in the end of their relationship. He didn't get anything. She took everything because he was considered crazy. Yeah, that's like, fucked up. Can't, she even took the wedding song. I think can't listen to it without. <laughs> yes, but that's what I'm saying. That's the, and that's exactly what I'm fucking saying. That's just traumatic, man. Uh. That's just like me, myself, and Irene. <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, it's a great movie. Like, hello, people. Let me just yeah. practice by saying that night Jim Carrey is making a comeback. Yes. But 90s Jim Carrey into oh. the early 2000s, top fucking tier Jim Carrey, right? And so, and the fact that he did it as a um an actor who, if I remember correctly, I don't think he's ever been a cast member on SNL. If I remember correctly. Don't quote um, me on that shit, people. Right. Either way, I, ju- I do know he got his starts from in Living Color. Yeah. And so, me, myself, and Irene, if you've never seen this fucking movie, it is hilarious because... <laughs> It started to fucking Jim Carrey and he's like uh, a cop and he's madly in love with this girl and so he doesn't pay attention to the fact because he's still in love with her that she's like cheating and so she ends up having three kids um, two of them are actually blood related in her life the other one obviously is um, not is Anthony Anderson but the other two were the Hercules brothers from um, Hercules 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 <laughs> yeah. from uh, <laughs> the Nutty Professor and so, and they're twins. And um, so she ends up having three black kids. They are a white couple. 
Jim Carrey's character is oblivious to all this shit. Like he cannot remember. Like he does not understand why his kids are black. He just happened to have his kids. And so they go through this whole thing with him because he has to leave his sons behind. But the whole thing is that he's an amazing father. Like his kids are crazy smart, getting ready to go to school, either for sports or for whatever. Just smart as shit. They just all like living at home with their dad. And so, um, because their mom left him basically. And so he, as a cop, doesn't realize that the people who he works for are corrupt and that this girl who he's trying to save, Irene, is also just not with the shits and everything the law. And he's supposed to be continuing to take the, these meds to help keep control with his multiple personalities. And he leaves them behind because he's like, he's trying to break away and do different things because he doesn't want to do what's normal for him and doesn't realize that this other personality is now in control at certain moments. And so this is like the whole plot of me, myself, and Irene, but he convincingly plays like two characters who are distinguishedly different and the same. And so it's kind of funny how he does it because it gives you like a different portrayal of how, you know, Jim Carrey as his normal character has to kind of fight for control against his more evil side because that's what he's just trying to go through. But obviously it gives it like a funny connotation, a funny like motive, but behind it, it's like a very good story. It's just like, you don't really see that often, but like that was definitely something only a Jim Carrey could do. Oh yeah. And, and I understand that nineties and two thousands, Jim Carrey was the little Wayne of the <laughs> acting world. No, I think about it. <laughs> yeah. Like that, you, that man has range. Liar, liar. Um, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, what else? I have seen me on stuff in Irene. The Truman Show. Yeah. The Truman Show will go down as his greatest movie of all time. Like, yeah. Bruce Almighty is good. Let me just say that. Bruce Almighty is amazing. And he carried Sonic. I mean, like recently, the oh. he he carried that movie. Like literally, wow. that he he did his namesake. Like. Yes. And I I am excited for Sonic too. Like honestly, when the first trailer came out with the fucked up Sonic, the fucked up looking Sonic, I was kind of terrified. Oh, I was I was high key terrified when I first saw the poster when they didn't reveal his face and it was just a silhouette with his like shoes and shit. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is up with this thing's body? Like <laughs> that shit looked real ugly. And then you saw the face and you're like, what the hell? Like, oh, stop trying to make anapomorph anaf bleh. anamorphic. Some whatever anthropomorphic, anamorphic creatures like, like stop trying to make them look too real. Like I understand that there is a sense of uh, realism that helps people distinguish between things that are appropriate to take advantage of and inappropriate to take advantage of. But you have to understand sometimes your content <laughs> you can't you can't make them look like a hedgehog, bro. <laughs> Yeah. He doesn't even look like a hedgehog in the cartoon. Like you have to convince me that that's a hedgehog in the cartoon. <laughs> you have to tell me that, that you meant to draw a hedgehog. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> like so, in a movie, you're you're not gonna use a hedgehog. Like don't don't j just use the cartoon version and real like real life him up a little bit, like you did. Man, but no, Jim Carrey carried that fucking movie. Like you can't you can't tell me any different. People, if you've never seen the Trooper Show, first of all, this is what I want you to do. I won't even spoil that for you. I will, because this is exactly what I want you to do. First of all, I want you to just like take your pen and smush your motherfucking face so hard. <laughs> you lose two hours of concentration. All right. Because legally, I probably can't say anything else. No, you can't. Because even that. Go too far. And I have a tendency to do so, but I'm at least keeping myself in a box. Just smush your face. Second of all, really pay attention to Sam movie because like rewatch it because obviously there's the stuff that you see that's obvious, like um, the different cameras, the different product placements, all oh, the sets not ready. Pay attention to the shit that you thought you saw, but you didn't know if you saw. Prime example, um, there's a scene where like Truman is starting to realize what he's going through and that something is not what it should be. And so he happens to go to the, um, find, he's like basically running around trying to find his friend, finds his friend, uh, his truck. And so his friend is supposed to be stocking the vending machine or not the vending machine, one of the shelves at this uh, grocery store. 
And so as he's like stocking it, every time Truman turns around, he grabs what he stocked and restocks it. So there's all this like little shit you didn't pay attention to that takes that movie a step fucking further than what it already like has done. And it's just like, God, this is a top tier masterpiece of a movie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Should have yeah, lost that shit. He deserves a lot of shit. Like he, that man good. deserves a lot of credit. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Man, Perfect. like, yeah, no, seriously. I mean, like, I have to say, Jim Carrey is like, I would say he's one of the most talented actors that that's pretty much out there. And I mean, range wise, and I mean, like, because the fact that he's done, I can't think of anything he hasn't. Hold up. <laughs> He the only thing. Oh no, he's been a villain. Nope. Oh. And, his, and his portrayal of the Riddler is like, you can't beat that. So good. You can't. For beat how that. shit that movie was, he was the shining light in that fucking movie. Oh yeah. Another one is Robin Williams. Yeah, I was. I was just thinking like, that. Yeah. Like, and just to put into perspective the range of his movie, uh, Good Morning Vietnam, mm -hmm. where this nigga did funny. It's serious and it's sad all together. And that shit hit. If you really want a movie that like puts you into like your feelings, my Centennial Man. Yeah. It is like an underrated sleeper. And like for me at least, in terms of his movies, because it's about this robot in this world where they do have robots and everything, but this robot becomes sentient. And so he's aware of that he's a robot. And that he's really smart, but also he can feel emotions. And this whole thing is that he falls in love with a human and she loves him too. And so they go through this whole plight of him trying to get married, but every step of the way, he keeps getting denied. And the whole thing is that he really wants to marry her because he under even though he understands that he's gonna outlive her, but at the same time, he also wishes that he could be old and die too. And so you just kind of go through this whole thing. And if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, he actually dies with her because it's just kind of like, you know, he wanted, that was his whole end game, just kind of be with her. Even if he couldn't technically marry her, he was like, I love this woman. And yeah, I may be a robot, but I have feelings too. And that shit really puts him in perspective when you're sitting up there calling Alexa every two seconds to turn the volume up and down, change the song, and the lights. Yeah, man, stay nice. Like, you do not want to Cyberdyne this shit. No. It could be Amazon that leads us down that path. Allegedly. <laughs> I mean, the problem is, is, like, nowadays we live in a world where, like, our movies, like, have dictated shit that that's happened. Mm -hmm. Like, Honestly, like, and, and and that's the other thing. Movies and everything are just ideas in the first place. So, like, Star Trek had those video calling things and shit. Like, now we got that shit. It's easy. Uh, though, the one thing that they got wrong when video calling is, uh, and this is where every movie gets wrong. Like, you're not always looking into the camera because you're you're looking at the person on screen and there's no person, there's no camera in the middle of the screen that you're looking at. So, you're not looking... <laughs> <laughs> so that that's the old, that's my only gripe with a lot of those movies but um but yeah man it, it, you when you actually look at at this shit like it's kind of scary because when you start realizing that these things are paralleling like real life now yeah. and like i i wouldn't have imagined us living in a world like this like in a world not i'm not even talking for the pandemic world i'm talking like in a world where I, and I'm not talking flying cars and shit, you know, but I am talking like video calls, being able to record yourself like like that and not have an issue. Yeah, video games. We are in general. Man, actual virtual reality. Like, I mean, I thought like when I was a kid, I, it was impressive to me that you could press a button that has an X on it on a controller and it does something on screen. To me, that was just fucking incredible. And then you remember when you first, you first had the cord and then it became wireless? Yeah. Right? Oh, like, oh, and um, that freaked me out when it was wireless because I used to always, I used to, like, it's one of those things where you have a tendency. My tendency with a wired controller was to, like, do that because, it, you know, it was usually caught up on something. Well, and I, I, I kept doing it. around and trying to hold it low. Yeah. 
<laughs> or you couldn't like turn off your PlayStation, like the PS1, because if you did, it couldn't save like yep. you know, your progress until you got the SD card. Yep. And even then, sometimes it wouldn't always save. So you'd leave the TV on channel three and just turn it off. So you'd be like, hey, do not fuck with this. Yep. And then even if you did save it, your files would get corrupted. God. Out of fucking nowhere, like for no reason, just because it felt like it. Hold on, I'm about to hit you in a core memory. So you remember whenever you go to like the movie theater or like the arcade? It's usually at the movie theater now, versus mm -hmm. like Chuck E. Cheese or an arcade. And they would always have that one VR game where you had to put the fucking helmet on. And every time you put it on, like it used to hang. And so mm -hmm. you put it on, and every time you put it on, and you'd be trying to figure out where the fuck you were, it looked like you were just in like some green desert. And it'd just be like, why the fuck can I not find out what to do in this game? Like, I've seen people put that shit on. Like, fuck, you can't do anything in it. It's like, yo, it's core memory right there, people. <laughs> yo, we all this fuck, but fuck you too. Damn. <laughs> hey, but something that'll never get old. Two things that'll never get old from that. Jurassic Park and Time Crisis. God. Them games have not fucking changed. <laughs> <laughs> like they haven't upgraded graphics they haven't done shit and oh, they're you know still what selling them <laughs> you know what was my shit back in the days so you remember the one shooter games we had the uh foot pedal yeah that's time crisis time crisis okay i was gonna say that was my shit <laughs> like i couldn't yeah, it like, okay i was about to say because i know they've like kind of current with similar styles but still with the foot pedal i'm like the foot pedal like if you had somebody on your team that did not know how to use that foot pedal correctly you wanted to shoot them, like yeah, that shit used to go crazy. God, man, that was like the, that was my favorite game in any arcade. I'm like, I need to go Time Crisis because I need to go work. I'm like, I've been working. I was like, Choo -choo. and then when they finally attached the guns that actually like moved mm -hmm. when you like shot it, like that shit was active as hell. And uh, I remember uh, Jurassic Park was my game, and I remember when we finished it. Ooh, like we, we we were at Chuck E. Cheese's and me and my cousin decided to finish it. Like, uh, because there was I mean we were we were getting a little older, and yeah. there was you couldn't like because I ain't gonna lie to you, if there was a place that had well maybe not pandemic wise but like that had like a an adult version of the Chuck E. Cheese like jungle gym thing, I would be oh, on that shit. Yes. That would be my shit. Hell yes, man! I would Ninja Warrior that shit. Like you have no fucking clue. Like I did that in London. Lucky. There's a demand. There's a demand for this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good for you. Like that's the thing. It's like it'd be good as fuck for you as an adult mm -hmm. to do that. I would be there every fucking day. Yeah, dude. Oh man. Uh, yeah, I went to this uh bar or pub in London. It was really it's kind of a pub style up not really just like a mixture. It was a crazy place. But basically you like block out time and pay for it. And they allow you to like hang in a ball pit. Like yeah. it was, so people are throwing ball pits around. It's like hot as fuck in there. It's just dumb shit. Music is playing, drinks are flowing, food. Like, yeah, it was a prime spot just to be chilling in a fucking ball pit like a little kid on Halloween. Man. Which is amazing. I mean, the kids are not gonna be the same after this, this pandemic, <sighs> at least not for a good 20, 30 years. Cause they ain't gonna be kids no more, nigga. Shit. No, I just meant like the kids, like kids just in general, like as a thing, not as like these kids. But like uh because like ball pits not gonna be a thing. Nope. Uh I mean uh, park like jungle gyms and shit were already kind of changing and like I ain't gonna lie to you, I like them space ones though that they have the bouncy ass material. Hey, I, that's my shit. I'm sorry. It, it, you get bounce off that shit. I'm not it's hot as fuck. <laughs> A turf? Oh, <laughs> the turf shit is hot as fuck. Hey, no, I'm with the schools out, out here that had fucking wood chips. Yeah, that was uh, landing on that ship. We used to jump off the swing would hurt like hell. And then we know, had who thought that was safe? Like who thought that was a fucking and the safe metal thing? slide? Yep, but that metal, metal slide and then a complete dome slides, yep. which they still have, and things hurt like hell. Like metal slide burns and the dome slides fucking sh shock the shit out of you. Well, I mean, I, that's the thing is like, that's how you know if you get superpowers or not. Hey, man, <laughs> like, the stuff we had to deal with growing up as kids literally could fail to ask if we had to ever gone to the military because like, <laughs> we've been shocked. We've been heated up. We've been yeah. like bounced off of shit we probably shouldn't have, hit the concrete, like everything. Fuck. Mm -mm. That was right. best this too.
And so, so since Bear's not here, we're not going to do a, a not this list. Well, and clearly Bear's also not, not here. This. We're not going to do a million dollar nigga scheme. We're going to do a zero dollar dumbass scheme. <laughs> <laughs> Something that should make you money, <laughs> but actually won't. Uh, something that should make you money, but actually won't. Yep. Comedy. Oh, stand up comedian. And this is gonna hurt because you know <laughs> the call out. We, we like jokes, but you know, as an individual who since doing this podcast is like, you know what? I probably could have made a great fucking comedian. Um, the whole idea that if someone thinks or a group of people think what you said was offensive that can ruin your the trajectory of your career is fucked up like i am a big proponent of being able to laugh at your fucking self and at others because we all need to laugh and not take ourselves seriously all the time and without being able to do that we become boring as shit mm-hmm. and we're in this world where you got two extremes one side that's like i don't know we want to like take everything you say and put it in a box and scrutinize you for it another side that just wants to say shit just to be fucked up and not really think about the consequences you need something in the middle like comedians to be able to say like hey you can have the best of both worlds and still laugh like mm-hmm. have fun with people shit you know yeah i mean don't hurt you comedy yeah plus like I, I did just go to a fucking <clears throat> open mic night and out of like the four or five people I saw perform, two of them were, one was okay. The second one was a nigga. He was actually funny as hell. But, like, yeah, I, you know, and I was not about to get up there because I'm like, I would be canceled on the spot. Cause, plus, like, observational comedy, you should notice people. If you're gonna watch a comedian or you're gonna, like, whether in person or on Netflix, they gonna say some shit that's gonna like catch in your feels, mm-hmm. or like observational, like oh damn, nigga, look at your shoes, they look busted as hell today. Like oh damn, you on a date type of shit? Normal shit. Your friends would make fun of you about it, mm-hmm. but now it's like oh well, you're on a stage, it's different because you're the mic, nigga. You got a camera in your pocket, and you can post this shit and yeah, ruin my whole fucking life to where I'm dox people know my address, my mama address. Remember that? Like you no know, people mm-hmm. laugh at shit. Have fun. Stop being so uptight. Damn. Everyone's like, I gotta protect these sacred societies. Why? I mean, yeah, I mean, unless somebody's like being threatening, like, cause right. there's there is a sense there is a sense of big like, threatening speech. Right. You know, that we gets people like geared that. up to do shit. Cause and, and we've experienced that. Right. Here, like we in our lives. Uh but yeah i mean otherwise just enjoy enjoy it yeah you're gonna get made fun of for a little bit everybody should everybody should i don't care i don't care who the fuck you are even if you got a like you know what hold on let me roll off people if you got kids yes if you got kids people i'm gonna ruin something for them right now santa claus ain't real your mommy and daddy is going broke for you and so therefore yep i hope you played this loudly and there was no warning to the shit bitches anywho <laughs> it's honestly, it sounds better up close. I'm not even going front with you. Anywho, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you should still just be able to like fucking laugh and enjoy life. Like, don't put yourself into a box of I gotta not step on toes because don't step on toes. You ain't gonna make a farm life, yeah. and you just gotta do some shit to put yourself out there. But I also understand too, like on your regular day, like. That's not that's not the, a comedian's life on a daily basis. They are that person and talk about that shit on stage for entertainment purposes only. Um, if you're an asshole and you're just talking shit all day, all night, all week, you're just an asshole. That's the problem. You need to be a lovable asshole. That's what mm. comedians are there for. Yeah. Some of them, not so much. I, Maybe because some of them just ain't funny. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe if they were funnier, I'd, I'd take it. Like, like Cannibal Burris, that nigga is not funny. I'm sorry. He got his moments. I can't. No. Um, But what what I mean is, is that like you got to understand. Like for example, we make jokes on here, and we're not comedians in any way, shape, or form. 
but we're just making like little jokes and th that's where we are here and then when we're around each other we joke about each other like and that's why we encourage y'all to you know talk about us we don't care i mean we've 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 been through worse honestly like especially being raised in black families uh i mean <laughs> <laughs> that alone I'm school in the hood and go uh, college in the white area like, yeah like, i mean we've been through it all and here's the, and the thing is is that you have to be real comfortable and like you got to be real in tune with your inner all-star player like thank you cat williams uh <laughs> but for, for real like you do yeah. um and that's something that you know i'm proud to say but for the most part we are like there are things that we don't touch and we don't talk about for reasons like because it would one it wouldn't even behoove us to talk about because there's nothing Granted, funny I about them i wish um but for the rest of the shit like we know what to talk about and, I, and if you guys want to joke and talk about us that's cool we encourage it exactly and if we just no, say don't talk about each other because y'all don't know each other like that right <laughs> and like if you gotta talk shit talk shit just know yeah. i'm gonna say some shit back mm -hmm. and if you hide your face behind some fucked up avatar of Dex's mom, I'm airing it out on you. Like, believe me. Like, no. Like, yeah. If your name is stupid as hell, I'm calling you out on it. Like, like fuck that shit. But yeah, man. I mean, I, but that's the thing. is like, it's, it's comedy. And again, it's for that particular moment. And yes, there are people like Joe Rogan who are stupid. And, you know, like... It, the fact that he thinks he's a comedian is funny to me. I've seen I, his shit. It is not good. You know, I, I, his comedy, his stand up comedy, not his I know. podcast. Yeah. I'm gonna say. Not really that funny on his podcast either. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm not a fan of Joe Rogan in any way because I think that he was good on Fear Factor. I don't that care about it. that. But honestly, that what, what I'm it. saying is, is that he, because with recent events, the his philosophy is shock value. It is shock value, but he does. He has a small point. I, I will give him to the point where he has one small point. Whereas we need to hear each other out. Yeah. Um, however, comma, <laughs> like understand that you hear somebody out and just point out things. You can point. You're allowed to point out things and say, "Hey, man, that don't make no sense." And do it from the most un non or unbiased just point of view possible. Yeah, yeah. Talk objectively. Like I'm not saying like bust in on their feelings and break them down like like and as a person but talk about like the objective shit and be like yo that don't make no sense man because of this yeah. you know the thing is is that you you can't just let people talk like sometimes you got to be like wait 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 but you said this but isn't this the truth is this evidence the thing like that's the problem is that he just goes along with these people and I'm not saying like I'm I'm not saying these people don't have a point because like I think I saw a meme where somebody was like nine out of ten dentists you know recommend the floss and he's like that one must be onto something you know and and here's the thing get hear that person out why didn't the why didn't that one dentist you know say flossing every day would help or whatever like why why is that oh because of this oh maybe he might have a point like let's hear him out let's not judge it immediately but let's talk about it afterwards but man you also have to understand that you got people listening to you and the problem is is that when you become too powerful <laughs> on a platform like understand your platform is too much like you're doing too much boo we get everybody changes too once they get that, that paycheck that money oh man we changed since we got our first year paycheck oh man when we got that whole two Oh man, <laughs> thank y'all for listening. You know, hey. <laughs> we went on a spending spree with that shit. <laughs> like, when you get that first paycheck and niggas be changing this shit, please believe people, we will not change. We will still be the same motherfucker. Like, content yeah. wise and growth, we don't, we don't grow. That, that's uh, something that people do naturally. But in yeah. terms of like the way we do shit and the jokes and shit that be coming out of niggas' mouths, that's gonna be the that's same thing. Like, we ain't going to be like, oh, yeah, nigga. Like, nah, nigga. Like, mm-mm. Like, be, we trying to be objectively funny. That's, like, the whole goal. You trying to just, like, have fun with this shit. And be authentic, because that's the thing, too, is, like, it, and if we do end up changing, like, actually, between the three of us, who would change the most? Bear. It's with money, Bear. Sorry. Every <laughs> <Yeah>. Bear. <laughs> yeah. 
This nigga, gonna have, this nigga gonna have like eight waifus. He gonna finally start playing child support. He's gonna be he's gonna get canceled because of all mm. the waifus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dare might become Mormon. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> we ain't gonna talk about that shit. <laughs> now nah, he would be uh, the one to change the most. I think he would. Like I, I won't change because honestly, I'm, 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 I'm good where I'm at. I think that's the other thing. Is like you got to be good where you at to not go to not change to go when you go further. Nigga, I just be on vacation all the damn time. Right? Yeah, I like to travel. That's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> They're like Mookie's. Where are you? Like, nigga, I don't fucking know shit. <laughs> Like, what was that bitch name? Was that Carmen San Diego? The, the the one where you had to find her? Is Carmen San Diego? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. On Mookie, me. Mookie San Diego. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Shit. But yeah, man. I mean, and that's the thing is like we're in season two already, which I, I I'm still like baffled about. Like I can't believe. Nigga, we've been out doing this shit for almost a year. If you really think about, it, like in a few months, It'll be yeah, years since we started. Yeah, like, shit, season two coming back to you. Like this shit's crazy. It's been a fun ass ride. Up Honestly, I mean, like, this shit's been therapeutic. Still, fuck these sponsors that aren't sponsoring us. You know who you are. I know I'm not. I'm not saying your names anymore because I realize just by saying your name, I give you something. Um, you know but what? man, I. And then fuck all you the ones uh, that give us contracts that say we can't cuss and shit. Fuck you. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> That's the thing, like, you like why, are you, why did they offer? Dude, why did they offer? Like, nigga, have you never heard any of this shit that we said ever come over? I'm, I'm like, the intro has me cursing. Our name has a fucking cuss word in it. <laughs> like, oh, also, also, just FYI, may cut this out, may not cut you out. I mean, may not cut this out, but Somebody asked me, like, oh, yeah, it's R-U-F-S, right? And I was like, god damn it. You could have spelled that differently. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? The R-U-F-S, Ruffs. Damn. <laughs> Granted, I wouldn't want to be Ruffs. I don't know. True. That sounds like some weird sexual position that's going to hurt after a while. <laughs> well... <laughs> Anyway, if you didn't learn anything, shut the fuck up, bitch. Um, you know what? Drown in a pool of two inches of water. And also, guess what? If you don't like, comment, and share this shit with people, I'm going to roast the fuck out of you by the next episode. Just hope you know that Watson is too. That's why he joined the mic. All right, people. Therefore, fuck you, bitches. And the people who tell you to don't live your dreams out, tell them, bitches, to kiss my black ass preach bitch he's just trying to get his ass ate uh, uh only uh, you can prevent the bullshit as bear would say even though he ain't here he uh and deuces catch you on the next one bitch <laughs>